Hello, and welcome to the Chapel Online and the fourth episode of The Difference. My name is Sean Wallach, and I'm from Columbia, South Carolina, and I'm excited to connect with you in this space. The Chapel Online is not a brick and mortar church. We're an online community with thoughtfully curated content that's readily available to you wherever you are, whenever you need it. And one of the best ways to stay up to date with this content is by joining our Facebook group page. There, you will be kept up to date with all of the new developments going on with the Chapel Online. Last week, Anne told us about being rooted in worship, and this week, that's where we're going to kick it off. But before I shoot it over to Gracie and the worship team, let's pray. God, thank you so much for today. Thank you for the moment that we have to connect with you, and may we realize that during this moment, no matter when it is, that you were there ready to connect with us. God, be with us through this week and everything that we go through. In your name we pray. Amen. This song is called Jireh, and Jireh is just another name for God, and Jehovah Jireh actually means the provider. So as we sing this song, I just want to invite you to rest in the arms of your provider today. Every circle 
Hey, friend. So how restful are you feeling right now? On a scale from 1 to 10, 1 being the lowest and 10 being the, the highest, um, how much rest do you feel you have right now? Just go ahead and drop it in the comments and tell us kind of your rating on a scale of 1 to 10, how restful you're feeling. And then I'd like you to tell us another thing. On a scale from 1 to 10, how busy is your life right now? One being not very busy and 10 being it's crazy and I can't even keep up with it all. So we are finishing up our Rooted series today. And over the last several weeks, we've been talking about what it means to be rooted in the resurrection. We've been talking about then being rooted in a relationship with God, being rooted with a heart of worship. And today, you might have guessed, we're going to be talking about being rooted in true rest, in real rest that comes from resting in Him. And so today what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the Ten Commandments. Last week, if you weren't here for that or you didn't get to see that, make sure that you pause and go back and watch last week's difference. And last week we talked about the first two commandments. And today we're actually going to talk about number four, which is all about rest. And here's what it says. This is from Exodus 20, verses 8 through 11, and it says this. Remember to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. You have six days each week for your ordinary work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath day of rest, dedicated to the Lord your God. On that day, no one in your household may do any work. This includes you, your sons and daughters, your male and female servants, your livestock, and any foreigners living among you. For in six days the Lord made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and everything in them. But on the seventh day he rested. That is why the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and set it apart as holy. It's really interesting to me that God, as he outlined these Ten Commandments, didn't command us to work hard six days a week. It's like he knew that he didn't have to say that. He knew that we were people of action. He created us to go after the things that he has called us to go after and to live the lives that he has called us to live. And he's called us to lives of action. But he also created us with the need for rest. He created us and he gave us a model of what it looks like to set apart an entire day out of our week to spend time with him and in him truly resting in the knowledge that he has it all under control and that we can come to him to truly receive rest and renewal and restoration. So it's interesting to me that God gives us that commandment because it is so critical, it's so important, and science even bears that out. Science shows us that if we want to be more productive, that we need to make sure that we have a rhythm of rest. And in this commandment, God tells us where we find that rest is by resting in him. Now, here's the, here's the interesting thing, is that resting is not just about taking a nap. It's about placing your entire self and completely surrendering yourself to God in that moment and saying, I'm no longer going to be in charge. God, I give it all over to you, and I'm going to take this time to rest. So what does it look like when the Sabbath plays out in your life? What does that look like for us as we, as we seek to live out this rhythm of rest. Well, we're actually going to jump ahead in Scripture, and we're going to see what happened to this rhythm of Sabbath by the time Jesus came on the earth. And, and we're going to see that there was a little bit of a change that had happened in the hearts and the minds of the people toward this idea of Sabbath, and Jesus had to come and remind us the importance and the need for and the purpose of this day of Sabbath rest. Here's what happened in Mark chapter 2, verses 23 through 28. 
It says this, One Sabbath day, as Jesus was walking through some grain fields, his disciples began breaking off heads of grain to eat. But the Pharisees said to Jesus, Look, why are they breaking the law by harvesting grain on the Sabbath? Jesus said to them, Haven't you ever read in the scriptures what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He went into the house of God during the days when Abathar was high priest and broke the law by eating the sacred loaves of bread that only the priests are allowed to eat. He also gave some to his companions. Then Jesus said to them, The Sabbath was made to meet the needs of people and not people to meet the requirements of the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord, even over the Sabbath. Here's the interesting thing that had happened from the time that God gave that commandment about obeying and honoring God on the Sabbath to this time that Jesus had come and was walking with his disciples through this grain field. The Pharisees, the religious leaders of the day, had taken what was intended to be this beautiful gift to us, this day of rest to connect with God. And they had created laws around it and rules around it and things that people have to do. And they had actually created 39 different laws and categories of laws about things that you could and could not do on the Sabbath. And just by walking through a grain field and picking up these, these tiny things of grain and eating them, Jesus' disciples had broken four of those laws. The, the Sabbath, instead of being a time that was meant to reconnect us with our Father, had become this obligation that people must do in order to keep and abide by all of these different laws. And Jesus came back and reminded us, the Sabbath is a day for rest. Jesus said, he is Lord of the Sabbath. He is the one that can give us the rest that we crave for our bodies, for our minds, and for our soul. It is essential that we spend time and prioritize time in our lives to take the opportunity for this Sabbath rest to reconnect with our Father and to rest in the knowledge that He is providing for us, He is looking out for us, he is in all and over all. So I'd like to share with you a conversation that I had with one of my friends about what it looks like for him to take a Sabbath rest. So, hey friends, I'm here with my friend Drew Childers, who some of you guys might actually know. He was on staff with us at the Chapel Ministries. He was our student ministries director for a while, and Drew has recently taken a new job, and his job has a really interesting, challenging schedule. So as we talk about the Sabbath and devoting time to spending time with God, um, Drew came to my mind because that is kind of a really recent challenge that he has had. And so, Drew, tell us a little bit about your new schedule and how that has kind of impacted your life in a really big way. Yeah, thanks, Ann. Um, just kind of the follow up with what Ann said is my schedule is crazy. I travel a lot for work. And so just for instance, for example, right now I'm in, I'm in California I'm, I'm, and I live in Georgia. So uh, I'm constantly on the road. Um, constantly battling with um, different time changes that I'm dealing with or having to be at different cities and destinations. And then I get to be home for maybe a week or two and then I'm back on the road again um, for maybe two weeks straight. And so a lot of the times um, I'm away from all of, all the things that are familiar to me. I'm away from my support group. I'm away from um, just uh, everything that is normal. And like Ann said, I used to be the student director. So I'm, I'm, I'm away from everything that I've used to used to know. Um, and so my schedule is always um, changing. And so it's very hard to um, adjust to what normal uh, was for me. It's, it's a, taking on a new normal. 
Yeah. So Drew, one of the things that I noticed just the last couple of months is that you've had some posts about the challenge that it has been for you to set aside that Sabbath rest that we have been talking about. Um, that intentional time to just kind of release your burdens and to rest in God and let him renew your soul and your spirit. Um, so what are the things that you have kind of experienced in that challenging time? What have you been going through in terms of your need and your desire to renew yourself with, with Sabbath rest? Yeah, that's also a good point. I think, um, and kind of like you mentioned, the posts that I made um, were me uh, finding time and making time within my schedule to get back to the things to where I connect with the Lord and, and feel kind of just his presence and feel it's the best way to explain it is to feel like a 10 year old kid again, to feel full of love and to feel um, full of excitement and joy. And I think uh, for me, the realization of those, of uh, the realization of that struggle leading up to that point is being on the go so much and um, doing so many different things and constantly not knowing, you know, where I'm going to be at next can really leave me depleted and dry. And it's not until I really experience and walk into and live into those days of Sabbath to where I feel refueled again and re and revitalized. And that's the place where um, I go back to the well to be, to be filled up. And so I just think for me, the, the importance of Sabbath is seen by <laughs> the days that I've lived without it and seeing my desire. It's kind of like, looking for water, I feel like for me, and, and not uh, always desiring thirst, but never being filled until you get a drink. Same way with me, with my travel, my schedule. I need something, I need something, and then it's boom, I get it when I make my day of rest um, to fully be the Lord, be with the Lord. Yeah, that's really good. Um, I think one of the things that we need to, to pay attention to is that Sabbath rest is not just taking a nap. Like it really is being intentional with the time that we spend with the Lord. So what does that look like for you? How do you rest in him? Um, how do you spend time with him? I wish I could say a nap, you know, because that would be the best. But um, yeah, I think that looks different, obviously, for, for different people. But I know some of the biggest things for me is, one, I really connect to the Lord and see him in nature. And so uh, I keep mentioning like the post you talked about, but that's when I was able to take a hike outside and go walk in the mountains and be along the river and do those things and really see God at work there. But also um, there's times where it's like, okay, I'm going to spend the day reading or I'm going to spend the day writing or I'm going to spend the day um, doing something that fills me up. And so I know uh, everyone is connected in different ways. Some people, I've had friends who do that, who, man, they love, they love just being out and fishing or they love going for a walk or they love not doing anything but writing and reading. Um, or maybe rest for them is spending day, you know, the day, uh, being with, being with someone who they love and communicating about the Lord and they feel ref refurbished and connected again. So, uh, I know that looks different for everybody, but those are kind of some of the ways, you know, that that, that um, I'm familiar with and those connect with me. Yeah, that's really good. One of the ways, and, and you know this from being on staff at the chapel and a friend to me, uh, one of the ways that I spend my Sabbath is actually through baking and, um, and making cookies and making bread and just spending time um, singing and praising. And all of that is one of the ways that I connect best with God through Sabbath. So it does look different for lots of different people. So my last question to you, Drew, is this. With a schedule like yours, where there's not, you know, every seven days you create this one day of rest and it's the same every single week, um, what advice would you give people for really making sure that they intentionally schedule that time into their week? How do you how do you do that when it doesn't really follow a set schedule, so to speak, um, a regular rhythm? Yeah, that's another great question. And it's kind of funny because earlier I was just talking to, to you about, you know, today I thought I was going to be able to finish work early where I'm at and I was going to spend the day um, in Sabbath, like I was going to plan to go for a walk out, uh, out here in nature and just spend time with the Lord. And of course something came up and I couldn't do that. And so that day couldn't happen the way that I planned, but something that did happen for me was in the long drives that I have, it's 
man, I need to turn on worship music or turn music off altogether. And I just look outside. I focus on uh, maybe what's what I'm driving around and spending time kind of talking to Jesus or in prayer or in silence, really, for me. Um, and it's taking taking um, advantage of the moments that I do have. So if I know, oh, my gosh, my plans have changed. This day's not going to happen. What are the times that I have that I can take advantage of? So that day didn't happen for me this morning. So I was able in the drive to spend some time in prayer and worship. But also after this call, I'm going to spend some time reading and writing and doing some things that I know bring uh, energy to my soul. Yeah, that's really good. And I love the fact that you are using the opportunities that you have and not saying, oh, well, you know, that didn't work out, so I scrapped the rest of the day. Like, there's still opportunities to redeem that time. And I love the intentionality behind that. And I think that that's what... Um, that's what we all need to do is make sure that we are prioritizing that Sabbath rest. Um, because as you found out in this time where you didn't have the opportunity and you hadn't really figured that out in your schedule, um, you're hungry for it. And, and so it is something that fills you like nothing else fills you. So Drew, thank you so much for being with us um, at The Difference. It was great to catch up with you and great to hear how God is working in your life right now. Thanks for being here with us. Thanks for having me, Anne. It was a lot of fun. So friends, here's the difference. True rest comes when we rest in Him. Resting in Him is so much more than a nap. It's so much more than just a day off. It's fully giving ourselves over to this relationship with the one who knows all and is in control of all. True rest comes when we rest in him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the gift of Sabbath rest. I thank you that you invite us into this relationship with you and that you just offer us your loving embrace, a place where we can unburden ourselves, where we can let everything else go, and we can just come and spend time in your presence. Father, I ask that you will just reveal to us new and different ways that we can prioritize this time of Sabbath rest in you. In your name I pray, amen. I think we can all be like the Pharisees at times. We put rules and stipulations on all the things that God created for us to simply enjoy. Anna Drew did a great job explaining that Sabbath rest doesn't have to happen on a certain time, in a certain place, on a certain day. But it's all about being intentional and connecting with Him. So this week, realize that true rest only comes when you connect with Him. If you're enjoying what you're getting from The Difference, we ask that you share it on your socials. Until next week, have a good one. Bye-bye.